All right. Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Vanjo, and today I'm gonna teach you how to wire an arcade stick using the Mojo Box enclosure. So, uh, what is the Mojo Box? Uh, the Mojo Box is a 3D printed arcade stick uh, designed to be highly customizable and uh, designed to fit most 3D printers. You can purchase the, uh, the STLs on my Gumroad and you can purchase the 3D printed parts like this on my uh, Etsy store. I'm gonna link that everything on the description. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna show you the functionality first, like the button functions and all that. So, okay, we're gonna plug that in. I have a little screen right here too that shows the, uh, the input mode and everything, like the input mode the turbo uh, ping rate, which uh, directional button function it's using, and if the SOCD is, what, what kind of SOCD it's using. So, um, so yeah, this is the joystick right here. So you can see. Uh, on this tutorial, I'm not gonna just show how to make these, uh, how to wire up this uh, uh, screen. Uh, I can just make that on a separate written uh, tutorial, which is pretty easy to do, honestly. So yeah, we're, we're not gonna focus on this part right here. So let's just ignore that. <laughs> Pretend that this is not here for our uh, next build. And so yeah, this one is start, select L3, R3, home, share, and then we have a turbo button here. So right there, it's working. Okay. And then we have a square, X, triangle, circle, R1, R2, L1, L2. And then yeah, joystick. So, so yeah, this is the Moji Box. This is a complete build, all functional. I've been rolling with this one for like almost a year now, and it's still pretty good, pretty sturdy. Okay, and okay, we're just gonna start on showing you what you'll need to build this. So we're gonna start on the tools first. So for the tools, you'll need a uh, Allen key wrench, uh, screwdriver, head, two millimeters is I believe is what we're gonna need for this one. For M3 size screws, that's what I use for the uh, for closing up the rest of the enclosure. Uh, this one, screwdriver, any size, I don't think it matters much. Just don't use the really small ones because we're going to be using this for the 12 uh, millimeter buttons on the menu buttons on the top. Uh, we're going to use these because they are, uh, what do you call them? They are um, screw-in buttons, so there's no need for soldering or anything. We're just going to screw those uh, wiring into the buttons and that's how you connect them so yeah and then this one suppliers i'm just going to use these to cut some uh some spade connectors that the uh that's on the uh brook 20 pin that a uh, 20 pin uh harness so we're gonna have to like destroy one of uh, some of the uh har the spade connectors so that we can fit it within the uh, 12 millimeter buttons that we that we use if you're not using the 12 millimeter buttons the screw in buttons or any type of like screw in uh, uh, buttons, you're not gonna need the cutter. You're just gonna need this for bending the uh, sandal buttons that we're gonna use because we're, we're gonna be bending the pins on that one. So we're just gonna use this. So I'm gonna show you that how to do that later, okay? And that's all the tools that you'll need. Um, I guess we can move on to uh, the module box that we're gonna be building on itself. So this one is. This one we're gonna pretend that we have a level. Th we're not. We're not pretending actually. This is a level three package of my uh, Mojo Box on my Etsy. Uh, you can learn about all, all, all about like the package levels of, on that one on the, uh, the from the from my uh, Etsy Etsy page. I'll be linking that all in the description below. Like I said, so yeah. So this is gonna be a level three. A level three includes a full enclosure that includes all three panels right here. And the box and the and the bottom the base box itself too. So and it also includes the rest of like the the uh, screws that you're gonna need. So it's already like pretty much pre-assembled. Uh, but you're still gonna have to like of course disassemble this to uh, to build within it. So okay. And then it includes also this one right here. This is a uh, USB adapter that we use to, that we'll use as a uh, pass through. To, uh, to connect the uh, the internal to the outside so you can plug it in so yeah so we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you this uh, this one right here this is, this one is the USB adapter that we use so as you can see this is a, uh, a female USB a 
a female USB-C so yeah now we're gonna use this uh, double-sided tape right here to attach it so that's all we need for that one it's more than enough to hold it in place so okay so that's a level that's what's included on the level three and if you want to find out the uh, the rest of the information on the levels of it like I have four levels by default one two three four and I have custom levels too if you have like uh, custom requests for the uh, for whatever you'll need like engravings or, or uh, uh, Korean lever compatible stick so yeah we can discuss that you can you can send me a, P, a PM on, on my Etsy page if you want to know more about that one for the customizations and all but this is by default this is a level three right here you can pick any colors as well you can mix and match so right now we're gonna mix and match and we'll move on to the next item that we'll need so next one we'll need buttons right here so right here we have uh samo buttons uh, uh, so this one we're gonna we're gonna use this 24 millimeter, millimeter buttons for uh left down and right so this is just the only 24 millimeter buttons that we'll use so okay and then this one is gonna be our up key and the rest of the white keys are gonna be our face buttons so triangle x uh square whatever so these comes straight but as you can see i already pre uh pre-bent them um so that we can save a bit of time a bit of time on this one because yeah Okay, so this one I'm gonna show you how to bend it later. So we're gonna need to bend these uh, these uh, pins right here so that it fits within the box itself. So because it's it is a pretty slim box, so you have to uh, you have to bend them uh, a bit a bit like this so that they fit they can fit with the uh, the spade connectors that we're gonna be using there. So yeah, that's just the uh, nature of the slim box. The, it's pretty easy. I'll I'll show you later. So. Okay, and then we can move on to the next item that we'll need, which is this one right here. This is the PCB that we're going to be using. Uh, this one is called the Pico Fighting Board. You can get this from Etsy on arcade PCBs uh, for like this arcade uh, this arcade stick PCB. I really like this one because it works. It works just like a uh, brick PCB, and and additional functions as well because you can like uh, install RGB RGB uh, lights on this one that you can like you, know, you can wire with your uh, um, with your buttons so you can have like like set up with like reactive buttons as well so it reacts whenever like you push something so okay, I'm getting out on tangent here so the, the main the main cell of this uh, arcade the, the main thing about this arcade stick that I really like is it can take the Brook uh, 20 pin harness right here and for the L3, R3 and all, and all that. And then it also has a, this one, we're not gonna use this one. This is the LS uh, DPRS switch. You can put a physical switch that, uh, and wire it with this one so you can uh, change the emulation of the of what the joystick is doing, whether it's the left stick, the right stick, or the directional buttons. So we're not gonna use this. Add-on one, I believe this one right here, it says add-on one. I don't know if that's focusing, but. I don't want that's gonna be our default for the turbo button so we're gonna use these the rest are just gonna be blank pretty much so we're not gonna use these uh, parts right here so but yeah only parts that we're gonna use here is this one this one and this one so we're gonna wire into those and yeah we're gonna move on to uh, oh and this is also what I use for for my stick for my personal build that I showed earlier at the start of the video where it can take like a uh, uh, 0.96 inch uh, OLED screen that shows all the inputs and all that but yeah like I said I'm not gonna show that in this video so yeah let's move on to the next item that we'll need uh, link for this one I'm gonna put this on the description as well this is this is a really cool uh, PCB I really recommend this so yeah well, let's move on to the next one and one more thing about the Pico fighting board is that it's about a third of the price of a of a brook ufb so yeah it's really good we're gonna need this one the brook 20 pin harness so this one we'll just we're just gonna we're gonna need these to uh to wire most of the buttons right here so including those menu buttons on the top 
if I can open it up. Come on. Oh, well, broke it. Whatever. Yeah, I'm just gonna open that back up. So this 20 pin harness, we're gonna use this for wiring. So this is what we're gonna be using for buttons and all. So some of these buttons, like I said earlier, we're gonna be cutting the spade spade uh, connector, some of them. So I'm just gonna pull one of these out, these uh, rubber um, covers. And get, get it. Need some condensing to get it out. So, okay, go. So later we're gonna be cutting these uh, wide parts right here. So I'm just gonna snip that off and then crimp it a little bit down so that it fits within the uh, the the two 12 millimeter buttons that we have on the top. So yeah, and then same with these ones. This is gonna be like the main ones uh, that's gonna be wired up with the buttons itself. And some, I believe, some buttons are gonna be wired up for the menu buttons up here as well. Uh, I believe it's going to be like the start select stuff. This one is just going to be, uh, I think it's L3, R3, and the ground for it. So I think that's the only one that we'll need for this one. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out later. I have like a little cheat sheet right here that we could use. I think share button. Yeah, whatever. Um, we're going to move on to the next item that we'll need. So there's that. Uh, let me just put that back in the package for now. And this one, I don't have it in the packaging anymore, but this one is a, uh, a hitbox harness from Brook as well. So you can just like connect this, uh, connect this side to your, uh, to your uh, twin pin harness. And you can use this to wire up your, your, your hitbox side for the uh, for the arcade stick so that's going to be for the directional buttons this is where you're going to be using so ground uh i think this is la right uh this is only down yellow is left orange is up so uh we're gonna i'm gonna show you a cheat sheet later that i uh printed out and uh, i'm also gonna link the image below uh, on the description i have well i can show you it now i guess so I have this cheat sheet right here that we're going to be referencing later. I'll be putting the uh, imager link on this one on the description as well. So you can look at that later. Okay. And now we're also going to need this one right here. We're going to use this to uh, wire up the uh, turbo button on the far, on the far uh, right side for the, for the, uh, for the menu buttons panel right here on the top so as you can see right here this is not exactly like the correct size that we'll need for this one because this doesn't fit uh on our uh on our pcb so see so what we're gonna do is just i don't have the correct size of jsc connector on this one so i'm just gonna repurpose this uh this harness that i have these are just like regular um uh spade connector harness this is a 2.5 jst connector i believe and the size that we need is a 2.0 so it's not gonna fit so we're just gonna pull these pins out later and we're gonna repurpose that to uh to ghetto hack into this thing, to connect it which is really gonna ghetto mod it <laughs> in there so and it's gonna be enough it's not gonna pull out or anything so you just have to like be careful when you're like putting it in so I'm gonna show you that later when we start building for the turbo uh, side. So, yeah, that's all. That's all you need. And now we can we can start building. So, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna put this one aside for now. Aside. Okay. And right now we're just gonna open up box. Open the box up and see what the uh, inside is. Editing banjo here. I forgot to show this one. We're also gonna need this uh, piece of wire right here. So this is a uh, USB A to USB C connector. So we're gonna use this so that we can connect our PCB on this side. 
towards the adapter that uh, we're gonna use for the uh, for the as a pass through. So if you're using if you're using a Brook uh, USB or whatever Brook uh, PCB that you're gonna be using, you're gonna need a uh, USB B on this side instead of a USB C. But because I'm using a Pico fighting board, that it is, it's now using a uh, it's now using a USB C. So we're gonna use this for that. So yeah, back to the video. menu buttons out. I'm gonna show you the underside of this one later once we uh, start wiring it up. Now we're gonna remove the uh, the all button side of it. Now 24, 24, 24, and 30 right here. set these guys aside and we're gonna focus on the uh, menu buttons first so we're gonna need these now so let's see I'm just gonna unpack this one okay. so this is the 20 pin harness so this one, uh, this side of the 20 pin harness, this is what you're gonna use for your directional button. So we're not gonna use this side for uh, for now. Uh, this one is the ground for your uh, for your uh, face buttons. So we're not gonna use that as well for now. Um, this one, not sure about this one. I think these are uh, these are face buttons as well. Uh, this one, let's see. Oh, yeah. And these are your ground buttons for. Oh man, it's tangled up. Okay, so. Okay, so this one, it's face buttons. These ones are also face buttons. And then this one is what we're gonna be using for the. Uh, for the menu buttons right here. So three buttons right here. So as you can see, it's just three buttons for now. So the other three that we're gonna be, the other four actually, other four buttons that we're gonna be using is on this one right here and the extra one that we're gonna be using for the turbo stick. So um, let me see my cheat sheet. There we go. Okay, okay. I'm gonna 
set this aside. I'm gonna look at what we'll need for the wiring. So start is white, right here. White, select is red. And then L3 and R3 is gonna be right here. Oh, I forgot to open up this one. So let's just do that again. So on your broke 20 pin harness, this is what you're going to be getting two bunches of wires, one for the 20 pin and then one for pin that you're going to be using for uh, home L3 and R3 or share button L3 and R3. Okay. So let me just get that bunch of wires again. Okay. So white, white start button right here and then red select button right here gray right here home button right there and then on the second batch right here we have uh pink l3 right here um we have blue for r3 right here and we have green for share button right here and then for the turbo we're just going to use this guy right here we're just going to repurpose that so okay so right now we're just going to strip everything take these uh these uh rubber guards on well this one just came out easily okay so we're just gonna take this off for now okay that's good take off this one good. make sure to take off the grounds as well not just the uh not just the not just the uh, connect the button connected as well. Okay, that's good. Set that aside. Okay, and this one. Oh. Three buttons: white, red, and gray. Make sure you don't snip those those uh, any other uh, speed connectors other than these guys right here because you don't really to do that on the other buttons at all so make sure you snip the correct buttons double check it make sure you skip you wait make sure you uh, snip the correct ones okay good. and then these ones right here these are the ground so you can see it's only three and it's also like bunched up together with the rest of it with the uh, the rest of the uh, menu buttons so yeah there will be there will be uh, two batches of uh, of ground so don't use this long one this is going to be for your butt for your face buttons which is going to be eight ground key ground wires and then this one is what we're going to be using for the menu button so i'm just going to pull that out for as well okay Good. okay now goes the destructive part oh actually we're going to postpone that a bit i'm going to show you the bottom of this one right here so, oh, it's a bit loose. I need to fix that. Okay, let me just tighten this up a bit. Okay. All right. So that's one more use for these. So if it ever just goes comes loose, uh, just retighten them back down. Actually, we're gonna have to like do it on several of them. I guess I didn't tighten them down, and then when I was uh, putting them on, that's my bad. All right, we're just gonna fast forward through these. I'm not gonna talk while I uh, retighten these ones. This this should have been like tight when I started it. So. Oh well, just tighten it by hand. I guess we're not gonna fast forward through it. That was pretty easy. Uh, tighten this just a little bit more. So make sure that you're noticing that we are flipped right now, okay? So this is the start. You flip it around. This is your start on the right side now. So right now, face side up, your start is on the left. But turn it around, your start is gonna be on the left, on the right. So just be mindful of that one when you're doing your wiring. So as you can see right here, 
these are uh, screw on terminals right here so what you're gonna do is just you're just gonna loosen it up and then the opening right there on the bottom right here um, can you see that on the video on the bottom right here is opening up so you can insert those buttons on or those uh did I say buttons you can insert those wires in those holes right there like from the bottom here I'm gonna be putting it on there and then tightening it tightening it down and squishing those uh we're gonna be squishing those pins down to hold it in place within these so yeah so right now we're just gonna cut those spade connectors because we're gonna be putting these spade connectors inside here so we can't really use these so we're gonna have to snip that off with the uh with our uh, pliers right here so okay i'm just gonna start with this one this is the ground for first three that we're gonna need so, so just cut along right here on this end right here so i'm just gonna do that boom okay that's good so as you can see i took out that part see okay now we're just gonna crimp that down just Tighten them, like tight, uh, make them smaller. So we're just gonna really squish that down like that. And one more on this side. Okay. Squish it down until it can fit within the, uh, the screw on terminal. So it's gonna take a bit of force. It's a very, very destructive way of doing it, but that's, that's what you gotta do to make it fit. So um, let me open that part up. See, and it's gonna be a lot easier if you just select the uh, the tw a twenty four. If you just use twenty four millimeter buttons on this one, so I just I I just like using these because it's uh, it's a lot of them. Like uh, I can wire up basically the whole controller up with an addition with the uh, with the help of like a turbo buttons as well. So yeah, I don't think I squished it enough, so I'm just gonna do that. Push it a bit more until it fits in. Okay, fits perfect. And then, so I did that on the ground first. So, oh, tight enough. Okay, then you're just gonna close it down until you can't pull it out anymore. So, yeah. And we're just gonna skip ahead or uh, yeah, I'm just gonna fast forward and wire, do the same thing for the rest of the uh, the uh, ground buttons right here, and we're just gonna work on it for now. So, okay, I'm just gonna do that. Actually, we're gonna do this. You know what? I'm not gonna do any fast forwarding or anything. We're just gonna keep it uh, whatever length this ends up being so that we could show the build real time. You can just skip ahead, I guess. Is what we could do just, just to make it like more understandable. We have, we have technology to just skip ahead on this video anyway. So if you don't wanna watch this, feel free to just skip, skip ahead. So see how this one is the squished one. This one is the pre-cut, like the cut ones that we're going to be using. So you can see quite a bit of difference on that one. So let's see. So we're just, we're just going to pull it out for now. We're just going to cr uh, clip everything off, and we're just going to squish them down. It's easier to do it with when, when you're not like inserted into the uh, menu buttons now. So. And what 
I like to do is I like to just test it out on one of the holes if it's gonna fit. Oh yeah, there's a bit more. This is the, I, I would say this is the most work intensive part of the build is just modifying these pins right here. This is what's gonna take most of your time for this build. Oh, that's why. Ooh, close down. There you go. Shouldn't fit. Boom. Okay, good. That's why we're having issues on that one. So just make sure it's open when you're putting it in. So don't be like me. Don't be stupid. That's good. Just gonna crimp this down. do that with the rest of buttons right here so I'm just gonna set this down on this uh, microfiber cloth so that we don't scratch those buttons and we're just gonna proceed with the next ones test as you go as well Well, actually, just a little bit more. Just want it to be, make sure it goes in properly. Open that up just a little bit more. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so just make sure these terminals are just fully open when you're trying to test them in, so you don't have to, so that it can actually go in. Okay, so this side is done. We can move on to this one. We're going to do it 
this is what we're gonna use for the turbo. We're gonna do this one last. I'm just gonna move on to this guy right here, which is gonna be our uh, our share button L3 and R3. So yeah. And make sure you don't cut too much off of this one. Make sure you still have enough uh, enough of that small spot like right there, so that you can put it in. Or else you're just gonna have to strip this wire and uh, squish the wire in itself instead of having these pins right here. So test it. Good. On to the next one. So as you can see, this is the most tedious part of the job or of the build because you're just uh, snipping gripping and then testing for that's like seven buttons so we're gonna you're gonna be doing that for overall 14 pins because each button takes two pins ground and the activation uh, pin or connection I don't know what's called whatever so. okay that's good next one is these guys right here. So yeah, if you don't really want to do these, you can just use the uh, use some 24 millimeter sonwell buttons for the top, but that's gonna be limited to like just four buttons. So you're gonna have to uh, have some buttons unmapped. So yeah, that's one more way to skip these this uh, this uh, whole step right here, which is a huge step to skip to, because you don't have to do this modification on the uh, harnesses. So okay, that's good. For this one, for these uh, buttons right here, you could just like just not uh, not do this one because you're just gonna be the only reason you want to do these on the ground buttons is because you want to keep this daisy chaining, and if you remove this, it's gonna disconnect the two wires together. So you might have to like reconnect those some way if you don't, if you uh, if you could, uh, if you remove this metal part. But on this ones, I just want it to be consistent, so I choose to uh, to. Uh, to clip the uh, spade connector off as well, and because this one you could just remove these metal metal pins right here. So yeah, we're just gonna keep going doing that, going on doing that. It's also a, nice, a lot stronger too, because you have if you're just clipping down on, uh, or I mean like uh, screwing down onto bare uh, wire, it's not gonna be as strong, so it might break. It's better if you have like a metal pin inserted into that uh, terminal. A lot stronger that way. Mm. 
Alright, that's good for that. Alright, that's everything for the uh, 20 pin harness. Now we're just gonna do the same on this guy right here. So, last two. Uh oh. What is that? Close that. Okay. I snipped off a bit too much, but as long as you have uh, a length of pin right there, it should be fine. I did that just a bit too much. And like I said, as long as you have a uh, metal pin that you can still squish down, it should be alright. It's a bit too tight, just a bit more now. All right, perfect. Okay, we're done with the modifications on that. So now, I guess we could just start connecting uh, stuff. And so, so let's take a look at our cheat sheet again. Right here we have get these screws out of the way. Okay. So here we have white. So it's gonna be actually let's do the grounds first. So just so it's uh the, the daisy chaining is already like in place. This one doesn't really matter what order you put it on, so just as long as you're uh that you're matching it where these are going. So this one is gonna be uh, start select and uh, home, which is gray home. So start select home. So we're gonna be doing it on the first one, second one, and the fifth one right here. So start select home. Okay, good. That still reaches, I believe. I hope it reaches. It does. Yeah, it reaches, so it's all good. So now we're just gonna open it up, open the, ter the terminals up. Should be sufficiently open. I'm gonna open it all up now too. So there's that. So what did I say? Start select and home. So 
one, two, and five. So remember, we're flipped, all right? So this is our this is our one right here. This is our start. Start, select home right there, number five. So put that in here on the, uh, just gonna put that on the uh, right side of the button, or left side of the button. And we're just gonna, now that's in, just tighten it back down. Tighten it down, and that should be good. And the next one, we're just gonna keep it consistent. It doesn't matter which uh, which terminal you put it on, but I like putting the putting the grounds on the uh, this side of the the right side of the. Uh, oh, this one doesn't reach much for the far one. Eh, actually, it does. I just keep it consistent, like I said, just to uh, keep it pretty. Even though you're not going to be really seeing this stuff right here, so whatever. I digress. Ooh, that's not enough for this guy. We might have to squish this a bit more. Okay, and that should be enough. I suppose. Just squish it down a bit more, make sure it's mostly rounded. Alright, perfect. Right, let's just put this back on. So be careful with these guys if you lose them. They are really hard to find because they're like super small. So just be careful, don't drop them. These screws are a pain in the ass when you drop them on the floor. Alright, so one, two, and five. So start, so like home. And we'll do that with the rest of the grounds as well over here. So for this batch, we're going to be using it on L3, R3, and share. So three, four, and six. So we're flipped. Three is on the right side right here. Three, four, six. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to do that on the grounds first as well. So later we're going to be working on the uh, the actual connection of the buttons, the color coded ones. ground wires in here. Huh. I guess this one is just going to be like hanging. We're just going to let that hang on the uh, the side there. Well, that got me confused a bit there. Why do I have four? You only have three corresponding ones. Huh? That's weird. Whatever. It's fine. We have four ground wires on that, uh, that bunch, so I don't know why, but whatever. That kind of scared me. I thought I snipped the wrong wires. But no, we're good. So, okay. Uh, now let's wire the uh, connection up for the actual buttons. So, let's start with start. Duh. Start, white. So, let's go in here. Right here on the right side. 
So I'll pull up your, uh, your reference sheet. Make sure you have it on white on start. So this one right here. So we're going to open that up. Bitch right now, so let me just tighten it down. All right. All right, that's not going anywhere. Okay, that's good. I should have made sure that these are tight before I started. Whatever. Okay, so white's good. Now we're gonna go do select, which is red right here, and this one. Just gotta go in there, so I'm just gonna open it up. Right. Actually, let's try to see if we can zoom that in. See the connection right there. Just put it in. It's in. And just tighten it down. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Tighten up the next one as well. Okay, that's good. And next one we have for this batch is we have our home. So it's gonna be on the fifth one. So right here. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Gray one, gray one, one, two, three, four, five. That one right there. Hopefully the camera angle is picking everything up. So it'd be nice if you guys can actually see these. I hope you guys are seeing these. All right, that's in. Good. All right. Okay, next buttons. So this bunch is done. Now we're gonna have to uh, do it for the other one right here. So. So L3, R3, and share. So L3 is pink, so that's gonna be our number three, L3, three right here. So we're just gonna do that. The third one. Oh, I made a mistake. I put this on the fourth one, so we're just gonna pull that up. Oops, and we're just gonna put it on the fifth one. I think these, uh, this part of the video is a helpful one, just a reminder for everyone to just keep a lookout on where you're putting your wires in, so yeah. be mindful, don't be like me, do as I say, not as I do, because I am stupid sometimes, so. counted that like three times and I still put it on the wrong spot. All right, so R3, fourth one. One, two, three, four, right here. So put it in there, squish it down. Let's see if you can see it. I'll screw it down like that. All right. And as you can see, like you might have noticed that we have like similar colors here as well so blue on the r3 and then blue on the square here it's not really it doesn't really matter much because it's on a different uh, bunch 
so the other blue wire is like on a second on a different on a different bunch of wires right here so you're not going to be able, you're not going to be confusing them with others so just make sure you you uh you look at what the other wires are as well so that you can see like which group it is this one is in a separate group so it's fine so be mindful of that too i think i've said that a little bit too late on the video hopefully you uh you notice that okay green share right here six button six button So that's all our six buttons wired up. Tug them a bit, just make sure they don't slip out. Make sure they're all sufficiently tight. Okay, good, 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 good. And then we're gonna we're just gonna tighten them another time for the last time. Just make sure. All right, and then we're gonna do this one for our turbo key. Like I said earlier, it doesn't matter which uh, terminal you put them on. You can put them on like green, like ground and then connection like right here too, doesn't matter. Like I said before, I like putting my grounds on this side right here. Oof, sorry, excuse me. Okay. Open that up. Put it in. That's not enough. Open that up a little more. And boom, it's in. Oh, it's getting pushed out. There you go. So that's that later we're gonna be removing this head right here just because but we're now we're just gonna leave it so that's it we're done with done with we're done with this part and we can set this whole bunch aside because we're not gonna be needing this for the next step that we're gonna be doing because we're gonna be wiring the directional input side so right here the head box side all right let me set that on the side for now right there go there We're gonna get our harness, like our, for, our hitbox harness right here, and we're gonna get our hitbox panel, our all button panel is what I call it. And we're also gonna put our get our buttons ready. Yeah, right there, right there, right there, and this guy here. So, oh, actually, oh yeah, that's the one that I need. And now I'm just gonna show you how to bend these pins right here because these guys are already bent. Right here, so it's already pre-bent. Right, you can see right there. And this one is what you're gonna be usually seeing on there on the usual uh, sunwall buttons. So what you do, just take this, take your uh, pliers, hold this pin, and just bend it. Easy as that. Just bend it. A bit more. Like that. Almost, almost 45 degrees, I guess, is what's. What's your, what you're gonna be looking for for this one. So grab it and bend it. And then that should be enough. And just a bit more on this one. Okay. Something like that. You see it? Okay. And we'll move on. So I already pre bent these guys. So you're just gonna do that with the rest of the buttons as well. So yeah. So when you put this in, uh, I like to uh, take off that uh, marker that I put on there. You're not gonna do get those markers. That's just for me for sorting it out. So, anyways, okay. When you put them on, uh, there's a, a particular way that you're wanna you're gonna wanna angle your uh, 
angle these guys pointing towards make sure they're like pointing towards the middle part right here just just it just makes it easier to uh to manage the wires later so so I'll put that in there like that just flip it in and it should snap in it's all right there so see it's like pointing downwards like that that's a lot easier to uh oh, don't break it it's a lot easier to manage manage the pathing of the wires so that they're not crossing on each other because if you if you if they're like getting on top of like the wires are like getting on top of each other it's gonna affect the uh, actuation of the buttons it's, like it's actually not gonna press as cleanly as it should so do that with the second one well these one these buttons that i have actually is like broken so but it still snaps in thankfully like it should have these tabs right here so these ones it's just broken because these metallic buttons actually pretty suck <laughs> sucks pretty much because or sucks i can't even say how bad it is <laughs> it sucks pretty hard because if you like try to pop them in and you pop them back out those tabs like uh snaps off so be careful when you're like using these metallic buttons they're great they look great but they those tabs snap off really easily so be careful when you're when you're using these buttons uh, okay all right in this tutorial this is not just limited on a on a on a mojo box uh enclosure you can apply mo uh, most of these steps if you're like making your own enclosure too so that should be no problem you should because the wiring is going to be the same if you're like using your own doing your own uh your own uh enclosure too so okay and then this one third limiter button just flip it make sure it's pointing towards the center like that and just push it down okay and that's it all right now we're doing like we're just gonna go see the wiring of it so like, like i said earlier it's matching right now because we're right side up but if we flip it we are mirrored now too so yellow is gonna be this side red is gonna be this one green is gonna be this one orange is gonna be this one the up button right here so okay let me say that again uh yellow is left red is down right here green is right and up is orange right there okay all right let's wire it up i'm just gonna set that down on this microfiber cloth as well Ooh. it's uh all right okay so we got like just like earlier we're just gonna do the grounds first so it's gonna be these daisy chain of black wires and this one, we don't have to do any modification on the spade connectors. We can just straight up just plug them in and uh, use them. So actually, yeah. so I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit slightly downwards, just like that. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna put it on the bottom, so, or not the bottom, but I'm gonna put that on the inner side. I guess is what you should, we should call it. And this one, put it in like that. And this one, put it in. All right. And next one. Okay. Make sure they're in. Give them a little tug. And then you can just, while these are in, you can just also just bend them a bit more if you need them. So this one, and I'm just gonna lower it just a little bit. All right, and then we can go with the connections. So we're gonna do this one first. So we're gonna do yellow, this one. All right, that's good. And red, just this one. the up one we need green first for this guy right here let's put it in like so and orange right here right there on the bottom 
タグアップキープ Okay. A bit of a tug. Make sure they don't come off. All right, that's good. All right, we're done with the hitbox or the uh, the all button side with the hitbox harness. So that's it. You're just gonna connect it towards the uh, the 20 pin harness later. I'm gonna show you that once we go back to it. So that's our uh, that's our all button side now. So uh, that's the, I mean our directional button side, and we're gonna move on to our buttons panel right here. So we have this X square triangle circle R1 R2 L2 L1 L2 okay all right so white buttons for this one we're gonna it's already bent so make sure you you bend your uh, your pins before you put them on and we're gonna go so this one I like to uh, point them towards this gap right here so when you're putting one just point them towards this gap there and then this one I think I'm gonna be pointing the next one towards so I'm just I'm just gonna insert buttons for now I'm just maybe I think I will be pointing it this way maybe so it points towards this gap right here that's just for wire management later so that you can just like put them in between right here so they're the so the wires are not going on top of each other okay next one I'm just gonna point it towards this guy, this side right here. Next one, I'm just gonna point it onto the outs. I think I can point it this way as well. I think that's gonna be fine. So both of these uh, ones on the uh, this guy's right here, just it's gonna be pointing towards this gap right here. So that should be okay. And then these ones for the bottom, just make sure they're pointing down, like that. No, no particular angle. Just make sure they're pointing towards this side right here and then towards the bottom all right all right okay good and actually let's show it from the top okay so, and boom and that's it okay good okay now we're gonna wire it up And we're gonna be pulling back the uh, menu buttons panel that we did earlier because that's already attached to the 20 pin harness and we need a 20 pin harness to wire it all up so it's gonna be all this nasty wire things so, okay so we're just gonna make sure that we did that correctly yeah so this is our bunch of wires that we're gonna be using so this bunch or wait no that's the that's the joystick right? Or the for the directional controls. Uh, let's see. This is gonna be this is probably gonna be just a jumble of wires and all that. Okay, so this one, and then this one for grounds, and then let's see. We have this one as well. So this is gonna be for the bottom row, I think, or it's is it? Yeah, this one is the bottom row. This one is top row. And then this daisy chain is for the grounds. So we're gonna do the grounds first, just to make sure that they're like in order. Well, not really in order, but it's in a nice sequence. So we're just gonna put that on the bottom side here, or the inner side, I guess, is what I should call it. I don't know what I should call it, but you can see like where I put it. It's right there on the bottom right there, so yeah. Hopefully I'm not like whispering <laughs> and my voice is still uh, clear. Did not just turn me up, I guess. I don't know. Ooh. Okay. Alright, let's do the top ones. Put that in. Alright, 
uh, be careful when you're like putting your buttons in make sure you hold the do the, the front side as well right like make sure you're holding them down because as you push this you can push it too much and the, the, they, these buttons can like pop off so be mindful of that one too see right there it just popped out because i was pushing this towards the bottom there so just just put it back in like that so, okay so that's our grounds are on so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buttons, eight grounds. And now we're gonna be moving on to do the bottom first. So these guys right here. Okay. These guys right here. Ah, this one's. Alright, so orange, orange, yellow, green, black. Orange, yellow, green. Black. All right, we're gonna do orange first. This one. And so orange for X, yellow for a circle. Green for R two. Am I still in frame? I'm still in frame. Good. I might be like far on the right side now. Oh, come on. All right. Oops. Okay. And black one. Okay. Yeah, that's black. Or L2. All right. Give it a bit of a tug. Make sure they don't come off. Good. And we can do the top side now here is square, triangle, R1 and L1, blue, red, gray, purple, and it's this group right here. So blue, red, gray, purple. Okay, so blue for square. And red for triangle. And we're also going to be testing this down later. I'm going to be linking a site that you could use this uh, to test your controllers on. And it's going to show you which uh, which button is like being pressed. So you can check your connections and you can check if you uh, wired it up correctly. Okay. Good. So I'm wiring it all up, it all up de depending on like how I want it to work. So that I don't have to like do any... Uh, any software uh, side uh, button remapping or anything like that. So yeah, we're all wired up here and now we can just connect it to the PCB now. So, okay. Um. Oh, okay. So this one right here, we're going to put the 20 pin on this guy. Oh, actually, I forgot to show you one more thing. I'm going to show you this one right here because we're going to need a way to connect it. I forgot to show you this one. I'm sorry. Um, I think I should splice that into the video later or something. I don't know. So we're just going to use this. So for the for the Pico fighting board, you're going to use this USB-C to USB-A connection because we're going to be using this to connect to the PCB and we're going to be using this to connect this guy right here so that we can do use this as a pass through so this one is just like a foot long uh adapter okay, we're gonna use that later once we uh put secure them on so okay good um so this one i believe the red side should be let's see Oh no, this one right here. So uh, these uh, red and or uh, red and orange side needs to be on the inside. So I'll just do it like that. So oh dang it. So this side orange and red towards the inside of the PCB or the 20 pin connector. I'll just put them on there. Mm, 
down. Make sure it's in. Yep. And I can go just a little bit more. Okay. All right. That's good. And now we can wire up this side right here, which is going in right beside it. And just pop that in. Like so. Right. Yep. And then that's it. Oh, actually, our also gonna be for our turbo key right here now we're gonna modify this one right here this guy so this one I'm not sure if you're gonna be using the same thing you might be using just another set of wires but this one I like to use this one because it has these uh, metal ends right here that I can just pull out and then crimp just a little bit and we're gonna squish it down in between the, the side walls of these ones right here and that's gonna be enough for the contact What do I need for it? Let me just replace this guy with a, with a thinner head or a thinner, uh, uh, thinner screwdriver right there. So I can just poke this and pull it out. So you can just take this side, poke it, and pull it out. So, no, that didn't work. Let's do that again. Poke it and pull it out. Push it out. Okay. This one is well. Okay, okay, push it out, and good. Now you don't need this anymore, because it's the wrong size anyways. Or I don't need this at least anymore, because it's the wrong size. This is a 2.5 JST. And you need a 2.0 to, uh, to connect into here. And I don't have that, so we're gonna just hack our way through this one. And we're starting to have like a lot of wires on the way now, so we might just I'm gonna do it. I should have done that first, actually. This is kind of dumb. Okay. So we have we have to connect to add-on one for this one right here. I'm not sure if it's gonna be the same for a Brook PCB. So sorry if I can't provide that info. Okay. We're just gonna squish it down just a little bit so that it fits on the on the on the far side or on the sides of it. And then we're just gonna push it in we're not we're, we don't want to squish this a bit too squish it down too much or else the connection might be a bit too loose so we're just gonna do the grounds first doesn't matter which side you put them on just as long as it's in all right that's it. it's all right I like that I like that all right it's in all right it's tight okay and then this one we're gonna squish it down a little bit as well just like the first one that we did all right Okay, not too much. Okay. Just enough so that we can put it in between the sidewall and the pin. Because there's two pins right there that you wanna make contact with, but you don't really want the two those two pins to be those two connections to be touching. So okay, I'm just gonna finesse it. Sorry you can't see this, but I'm just trying to squish it. Alright. And see if it's not touching them. Okay, give it a bit of a tug. Red is a bit loose, so just this is a pretty difficult part. You you can choose not to uh, wire the turbo buttons. You don't want to if you you don't want to do this, but you know it's nice to just in case you need them. I don't usually use them on like fighting games. I use them on just arcade shooters like Metal Slug and stuff. It's a lot easier to have those turbo keys. So I like to use it, uh, or I mean, I like to wire it up. Come on. All right, all right, that's good. Okay, that's in there. Um, oh, it's gonna be, actually be mindful of like the pathing. <laughs> we're gonna have to do that again later, because, oh. I think we're gonna have to actually let's do that within our box now. So, man, this is really messy. Okay. So I hope you're not losing track of like which one is which on your side right here, because what I'm showing on the video right now is quite confusing because of like all these jumbles of wires right here. So <clears throat> let's just go to the box right here. 
And before we put everything inside the box, we're gonna put this on first. This is gonna be our pass through that we're just gonna tape down. So, hit this. So, and just tape it down at the bottom here. Um, be mindful of like the orientation of your USB A. This one right here, we're just gonna do it like that. So it's gonna connect like that. So it's gonna be name side down to so USB 3.1. Doing name side down. So we're just gonna put the tape on that side. Alright. Make sure it's relatively straight and just massage it in there and then take out this side right here and what I like to do to make it uh, flush to the outside is take something flat here I have this uh, this metal sheet right here that I that's just thick metal plate that I keep and you can just find whatever if you have anything flat that you could use I don't know what it's gonna be but that's up to you what you want to use like a notebook or something just put it right here put it on this side right here against this side flush and then push this in to that hole right there push this side in there until you touch the uh, the metal side the, the flat side that you're putting against it and then just push it in okay make sure it's flush and then tilt it downwards towards the uh, surface and that's it that should make sure that it's flush on the outside there okay easy it's straight yeah, it's straight enough. <laughs> it's a bit crooked, actually. But, uh, yeah, it's good enough, actually. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Pretty flush. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Alright, now, we move on. Uh, get this one ready as well. Put that in there. And what I like to do is I just twist it on this uh, pillar right here so that there's not a lot of slack going on. Just make sure that in the bottom. Alright, I just twisted it a different way. Okay, it's the same thing. Alright, so it's gonna be like that. And then our PCB is gonna be sitting right here. You can either tape it down or just hang it loose. It's it doesn't matter much if you tape it down or not. Mine I just keep it loose because once you close down the uh this top panel right here, once you close it down, it's just gonna press down on that PCB as well. And it's gonna hold it in place pretty much so. That should be fine. And yeah, now we're just gonna position this again, this whole mess of wires right here. And we're just gonna make sure that this turbo button is free from any uh, any obstruction so that we can just route it into the uh, to the slots that we needed to. Oh man, this is tough. Cause I mean, this is tough to like show on the camera what I'm doing cause there's just a lot of wires now. Okay, but yeah, anyway, so I'm just gonna get this two, two, uh, two wires right here. Make sure they're like in between the option, the add-on one, or like wherever you need the turbo buttons or the turbo keys to be. So I'm just gonna redo that here again, just like I, how I did earlier. Actually, let's, let, me do, let me do black first, which is the ground wire on add-on one. Side there, okay, nice and tight, okay. and do that. Hopefully, my head was not on the way on that time. All right, let's loose. Okay. Mm. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty tight. All right, so. Add on one is I believe that's the tur the default turbo for this uh, this particular board. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the same still. This is a new one. But the last time I checked, turbo is still on the add on one uh, by default. Okay, so all right, we're just gonna route this like this. Rest of the button or rest of the uh, this uh, this bunch right here. Just need to make sure that it's. Um, 
I like that. that's good. So I'll just bunch it up right here. If you have zip ties, you can zip tie them together. This one is fine to just hang, let it hang loose like this. And then just put them in between this spot right here of the, uh, the enclosure. So, okay. And then you can just close them down like this. This one, is, this is just the extra ground button that we have. I'm just gonna push, push that down there. It's not gonna affect anything, so don't worry. So, yep. Yeah, just squish down your wires down there. And then we can secure this down right there. And later getting pressed cleanly so that's a good sign that it's not uh, getting obstructed or anything like that okay and then we can proceed screwing it down I'll get my two millimeter back for this guy this one has an automatic screwdriver so it's pretty easy to uh, use Here. And put on the rest of the holes now too. Oh, that's going down. Okay. All right. Okay. And now, once we do that, I actually like to uh, to test my buttons out just before I close everything down. So right now I just secured this menu button. Just, you can do this without securing anything yet. Uh, I just remembered that I need to uh, test these buttons, right? So you can go search up on Google. It's gonna be called Gamepad Tester and it's gamepad-tester.com. And it's just gonna, you're, you're gonna be able to like connect your, uh, so we're already connected up. Just use this. This is already connected to my computer. Uh, so we can just plug that in. And it should read. There you go. Cool. So this one's working. That's good. It's working, working, working. R1, L1, R2. Okay, it's working. L1, L2. It's working. Start, select, L3, R3. Okay, that's good. This one, uh, this is a shut button, so you won't be able to see it, but you're probably not going to use this. And then this one is going to be the home button. It's also not showing up on this, uh, this, uh, and let me use another website actually. Uh, controller tester. Just so I can see, because I want to see if the share button and the home button is working. Controller tester. Okay, so this second website is called a, also called Gamepad Tester, but just GamepadTester.net. Hmm. Looks like our home and share button is not working. Is that let's see let me open it up did it come loose maybe it did we'll see so that's gonna be green and gray or maybe I should just change the input mode actually uh, let me do that so I think PS is hold triangle button and push it in, I think.
Oh, there we go. Oh, it's working. It's fine. Let's see on another input. Let's see here. Oh yeah, it's fine. It's good. Let's see on another website just to confirm. Yeah, okay, we're good. And we can close this up now. All right, sorry about that little tangent right there, but it's working. And then later we're gonna be connecting our uh, our directional input buttons. Actually, I should show it now, which is... So it's just gonna be this guy right here and this one right here. So this one usually connects to the joystick side, but we're not using a joystick on this one. So we're just gonna connect it towards this guy right here. So uh, black one right there and then black one right here. Make sure they're like lining up. If you don't, it's gonna, it's not gonna work like only two buttons of your, of this uh, directional input uh, panel is only gonna work. So make sure that works. We're gonna go jump back into that tester again. Plug it in. So right, or left, right, down, up. Good, perfect. It works. All right. Now we're gonna secure this in first. So it's connected and all that. Make sure it's all tight. So you can choose to wire manage this, which is like just using zip ties and all that. But this one, it should be fine like this since. And it doesn't really need to look pretty since you're not really going to be looking at it. So make sure before you close it down that it's uh, that it's actuating, that the buttons are actuating cleanly. And then once you're sure, you just secure them down. Let's do, one. Let's do the two corners first. So I can let go and just keep on doing the rest of it. Close it down. Oh, I'm off camera on that one. I should have checked. And uh, this one. Okay, so that's it. Actuating nicely, still works. So I didn't, un I didn't unplug it, so I can still see if my inputs are like reading onto my computer. And this one, just give it a twist. And then this one right here, you're gonna have to like get it bent down. So right now it's just straight. That's not gonna close uh, properly if you don't bend it down. So you're gonna want to bend it, maybe towards here towards there and that's not gonna hurt it or anything like that it should be fine you're gonna bend it towards this one right here this way right here and then you can just collect the rest of your of your uh, wirings and buttons and panels just squish it all down and then make sure like not much of buttons are like underneath the buttons make sure that no wires are like going on top of each other this one for the first time if you're gonna be closing it it's gonna be a bit tight but that's because you're just training all the uh, all the wires to uh, to fit the space so make sure your buttons are like all actuating nicely before you close it down and this one as well and it looks like they work fine yep yeah, it's working good and we can close it down so just put some weight on it just so that the uh, the wires don't push the panel up so just like earlier we're just going to do the two corners and close
close it down. Ooh, we've been going for an hour and 20 now. Hmm. It's a pretty long video. I have to cut it down uh, or something. Or you know what? No, I'm not gonna cut it down. We're we're gonna show everything. Like I said earlier, we can just skip ahead. I just I just want everyone to see like what's going on. So it's gonna be a lot handier if uh, everyone can see what's going on. I missed a screw right there, so we're just gonna put that in. So it's gonna be like a some sort of like a build along thing kind of kind of stuff. So so you can just keep going as I go through the video and go back if you like missed anything. Okay, and that's that. That's a functional hitbox right there. Um, let me see. I'm gonna show a different angle. Uh, let's see if my turbo is working. Turbo's not working. Uh, whatever. I, I guess I just didn't uh, connect it properly, but the concept is the same. So, like, if you wire that up properly, maybe it got pulled out actually. Uh, mm, yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, it's not working right now, but I can fix that later. So, maybe it just got pulled out from the inside when I was doing that, uh, all the positioning and all that. Maybe it got pulled out, so that's why. So, yeah, I'm going to stop the video here for now, and then I'm going to come back later and show you the testing, uh, the testing site, okay? Uh, one more additional step that you might want to consider is to put some um, furniture pads on the bottom of your arcade stick, just like this one. So, this is my own build right here. So, as you can see, uh, on the bottom, I have couple furniture pads on there just to just as an anti-slip material so that way you're pressing buttons on it it's not sliding around if it's stuck on the table so yeah all right i am back and i have resolved that issue with the turbo key there wasn't anything wrong with the wiring or anything with that it didn't get pulled or at all uh, it was just the the pcb was not configured correctly so i had to go into the configurator and activate turbo mode for that key so uh, it's working now, so we're just gonna test that right now. We're gonna test it on Steam earlier when I was like doing the uh, testing off screen uh, while we were building it. I was just testing it on some uh, gamepad testers uh, websites, and now we're just gonna test it on Steam here. So, what we're gonna do is just open up big picture mode on Steam. So, open that up and then press this uh, settings right here on the top, this gear icon, go to controller. And then you can see right here, if you are on the correct mode, if you're like on Xbox mode or PS4 mode, you should be able to see this begin test button right here. So I have it on PS4 mode or, uh, right now and Steam uh, Steam Big Picture mode recognizes it as a PS4 controller. So if I click that, you should see a PS4 controller or whatever uh, input you have it set on. So I have it on set on PS4 mode. So yeah, triangle or square, X, triangle, circle. R1, R2, right there, and L1, it's working, and L2, right here, L2 is working, so, and then directional buttons, fine, up is fine, start, uh, select, so this one, Steam's like a bit weird on this one, so, I believe there it's getting mixed up with like the select and like the share button right here, or this one right here. Sixth button, so select share. So they're all mixed up right now. So if that's not working with you, just switch those buttons uh, uh, over. Like switch those uh, the activation wirings over. You don't need to switch the grounds over. Just switch those two up if it's like if you're not fine with this one. But this one, it's this is just Steam being like uh, being confused of like what's going on. But if you use this on your PS4, I believe it should work fine. So I'm gonna leave it like this. This should be okay, even if they're like mixed up with share and select. That should be fine. Uh, R3 is going, or L3, L3, yeah, R3 is going good. And the home button right here is working fine. And now, yeah, select. 
or share whatever and then select our turbo button right here so how you do it is turbo you hold down the turbo button and then you press whatever button you want to uh, to activate the turbo on so in this case we're gonna use square so yeah so that's active and then once you hold down square it's just gonna keep on activating I have the pull I have the ping rate uh, quite low so that you can see it uh, so yeah and then if you want to deactivate the turbo mode you just so it's working and now you want to deactivate it hold the turbo again and then tap on the button that you want to deactivate and then that should be good so yeah that's it we have the functional fully functional controller here you, know, you can roll your hands through it press everything everything's working and yeah we're good and thanks for watching i hope you learned something new about uh, build, building controllers because this is like i said earlier this is just not uh, exclusive this uh instructions are just not in exclusive to uh to the mojo box so you can use this wiring method on any uh on any uh enclosure that you're using even if it's like a custom um even if it's like an actual pro product like a vitrix controller or a hori wrap or something something old like that this wiring method is going to be the same so yeah thank you for watching and I'll see you next time, if there is one. <laughs> Thanks for watching the tutorial. Bye.